Hi, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program, where we want to fix this thing. The Kerbal Space Station. We want to have it in a way where it doesn't break every time I load back in. Which is easiest done if we're getting rid of these stupid things going to the sides. But we don't want to get rid of them completely because this is like a lot of fuel inside there. A lot of fuel that we might want to want to use at some point. So what I'm going to do is I took the mission to expand the space station uh, to have a facility supporting at least 16 Kerbals. And uh, I wanted to use that. So we have to, to, to up it by another five. Uh, we have to do that uh, uh, and we will use that to also make this more stable. So every time I load the space station, every time I go there, the first time I go there it completely breaks apart and wobbles and doesn't care on uh, whether I have these reaction wheels disabled or enabled. So it's not mainly the reaction wheels. It might be the big solar panels causing that, so uh, I might want to retract those and get another stage with uh, with other solar panels. So what I'm I am doing is I'm bringing a thing here that will detach these, move away with that, de detach this, move away with that. Then I'll rotate the station. Then I'll put it all to the back side of this all down here to make one long station and the stage will have other solar panels so that I can just retract these via this uh, panel and uh, and get rid of uh, of the instability that comes here. I hope that the station doesn't break in the process but one thing that I want to do to accomplish that is uh, we will have to get rid of everything that's on this thingy here. So we'll have to decouple this node. So and by decoupling this node, we also made it possible to go into the tracking station and delete that part completely from the game. So we would now have to wait for like several turnarounds around the on around Kerbin for it to get more than two kilometers away so it doesn't crash into us, but we can just destroy the debris. Good. So now our job is to build something to expand the space station. And that's the thing we're gonna do together. And we'll also uh, be doing a thing that I had in mind for, for a while, which is sending more science data up there from Kerbin, for which we'll devise a rover. I will devise a rover in my free time, drive around the Kerber Space Center, as I did in the episode where I did my, my She's Rover. I think uh, that's how I titled the episode, Sheezing Science on, in the KC, something like that. Uh, we will send all that data into the bottom part of the of the rocket and then send the rocket up so it can be fed into uh, the lab there. So we want five more Kerbals supported. Uh, so we could start with the Mark III, uh, Mark 1, 3 command port. A Mark 1 3 command port, which is 3, and we want another 2, which would be. Uh, I don't like the crew module because it's it's tiny, but I think we'll have to take it, so uh, we'll have to take the structure. I can just take the hitchhiker container. If we're taking the hitchhiker container, it might be better to use a command pod that's better suited for this. Something like the Mark 1 lander can. I have to look at how big it is. For this, I use this as a reference, as this is the exact same size as uh, the docking port. So I could use. I don't like starting a space station on a lander can. I'm planning to leave the pod up there. 
at the end and use the the upper part of the port to attach to the station so um I mean, I could use the back, I could use a viewing copula. Your more pilot con uh, This can be completely used as... This can be completely used. Yeah, why not? So the copula and the other thing must be under utility, cargo. Payload. Ah. Sometimes it's nice to know where things are, and sometimes you just don't know. Yeah, it was the hitchhiker container. So that's the part we're gonna attach. Um, we'll have. Do we have big RCS fuel tanks? Wrong size. Right size. Okay. How much RCS? You have more than the station has now. Okay. Um, so this, and then... We're gonna use... Do we have the other... The big... We don't have the big docking port set. Okay. So we have that. We also want an SAS. That's under command and control. We have the large SAS module now. Put the SAS module in between here. And we want to use an adapter. Adapters are under structural. The Rockomax brand adapter. Where is it? There it is. And the, cup, the docking port. The docking port is under coupling. This one. Turn it around, place it here. This is what we're going to attach. So, we would need a battery. We didn't get really big batteries, yeah? Oh. This is a problem. We will need batteries. Uh, the other one has batteries, but I think we'll have to put some on here to get up there. And we won't be able to get rid of them, so uh, we'll need to place them in a way where they don't annoy us. Yeah, center of mass is perfect. Perfectly placed. The problem is now the center of mass is here and we'll use RCS and the center of mass will move. But that's no, pro no problem for us. Uh, 2G, 15G. 100G, so we have the big relay antennas now. Oh my fucking god, are they big. And I said big relay antennas, yeah? I didn't know they were that big. Um... Yes, yeah, something like this, but only in... only one. Which I have to place from the top. I have to look through the center of mass and place it exactly in the middle. This isn't the the best thing, but we have one relay antenna now. This this will help us relay stuff better because We don't need that. We don't need that. We'll use other satellites to relay. We will have a relay satellite with the big antenna. I2, I15, I10. We'll have that later. And this is the big single antenna. How does this look if it's extended? Yeah, this is also ridiculous. That's for sending, uh, sending data to Duna and stuff. Um, we want a little, at least a little battery though. What does this look like? Ugh, it's one of those. I don't like the ones that fold like crazy, so we'll just put a single one in the middle here on top. Um, 
we wanted to bring electrical, we wanted to bring the solar panels, the other ones, because the big solar panels might be the problem. So if we have them here, can we place them here also? No. Okay. So A is the wrong symmetry. Shift X to go one step back. Place them. Also place them here. Place them. Also place them here. Make a custom weight. Move them one over, so they're not on the exact same axis. So we now have a lot of normal photovoltaic panels, each of which can do 1.6. We have 24 of them. Uh, you need 15 to make up uh, to make up one uh, gigantic solar array, uh, and we had 24. So we have like one and a half big solar arrays that must be enough by this point okay so we want to have rcs thrusters Ooh. we need to place a thingy storage tank on this because we want to transport Blah. Can I have the communitron, please? That doesn't look good. There's like one point where it will work. Let's activate this to see if it only places one part. Yes, it does. Okay. And for this, we'll have to get rid of the symmetry. Okay. So this little it doesn't look stupid at all, but this experiment storage unit will be filled when we come there, so that's very important. Okay, now, I don't think we'll need anything anymore, so let's do our custom action group for expanding all these solar panels. That's our action group. 24 solar panels will be extracted when uh, ex expanded when extended when uh, when we press that button. So now we only need our four RCS thrusters for four cardinal directions, of course. And we want to see exactly. So if I'm now aligning at the point of mass lies exactly at the lower part of that bullseye there. So after after placing the RCS thrusters, it should lie there again. So if I press put them here, that would be the case, but we have to put them up there. We will have to use them a bit lower, so like here. They are slanted now. Hmm. Okay, we'll have to use them here. And them here. So if these are extended. Okay. Yeah, you have to fight for finding the button that's correct sometimes. Are you still in the break action group? These panels, these panels, these panels, these panels. Okay. Because now, if I'm extending these. This thing is not pointing direct. Ah, that's still bullshit. We can't do it like this. These must be up here. That's the best we can do. Okay, so, um, fuck you. Okay, we need to move them over here. As low as possible there. So we don't have, what the fuck? Symmetrical, please. Uh. Why is it slanted like this? This is crazy. Uh, so these must be in that direction too. 
in the same one. Yeah, and then we use our trick to deactivate draw, pitch, and roll so that I can use RCS and SAS at the same time. Draw, pitch, and roll deactivated. And I already promised you via text pop up during my last. Uh, last mission where I did uh, where I did use stuff like this uh, that um, uh, that next time I would use the proper uh, controls and I will I will this time uh, so I will use translational controls with my right hand and uh, rotational controls with my left hand because the buttons JKL I H and N, I think, are the ones that are bound to translation and movement using the uh, RCS. I will, f uh, I will look that up before going into orbit and I will call the buttons out as I press them when we actually do our docking maneuver. And we want to decouple this with a TD25 decoupler. And below this, we will have to use, uh, it's under payload. Proper fairing. For aer aerodynamical reasons. Wow, can I? Okay, there's like, is this the stupid toggle snapping thingy? Great. I love your controls game. I make the angle, I'll deactivate the angle snapping in, in hopes that it does work better now, so. First of all, we want to start close. And actually, please, you. A, I'm pressing left mouse button and the thing has the right color. What's your problem, game? What's your problem, game? Why can't we do this? This is. Can't even say which color that's supposed to be. Okay, we're trying to go straight up again. Now this works. Okay. So, uh, we have different things here. There's like uh, clamshell deploy, interstage nodes and stuff. I have no idea how this works. I know one thing though. I don't want the eject ejection force to be uh, to be too strong, so uh, I'll not be I'll not be uh, messing with that because if I do that too strong, my rocket gets snapped in half while while doing this. So we have this. This is our dead weight that has to be transported into a uh, into a meeting point with the station. So, uh, this is 10 tons. We want to transport that most likely with, with a Rocomax tank that are these ones. We have the 16 and 32. The 32 was like the usual stage one thingy. We have I mean, the rocket is not too heavy, so we should be uh, already moving us enough with a poodle and the 16. This is just for interception of the station. Uh, this has a delta V of... This is not even atmosphere. Ah, uh, down here is at uh, atmosphere value. Yeah, I have a thrust weight ratio of 0 0.3, but down here, in at without atmosphere, I have the uh, thrust weight ratio of 1.2, which is enough for interception maneuver, maybe even too much. 
and we have a data V of 1600, which is way more than enough. That's actually too much. I mean, let's assume we're doing part of the... Let's just assume we need this to do part of the orbit. Then we'll need another decoupler. I mean, now you don't have to watch me build a rocket again, do you? I don't know. Do you like seeing me watching, uh, watching me, watching the uh, the screen to build a rocket? I have no idea. And all the stupidity has to be accelerated into space by uh, by an engine that is. I mean, we can just use the mainsail. That's not enough. And the mainsail is not enough, so we'll use... I think it's the skipper. What's the skiff? Let's compare that. Skiff is the wrong size, is it? No. Skiff is also the right size, it's just worse. Ah, it's double the strength. It's just double the strength. But no better ISP. Okay. So we use the skipper. Uh, which doesn't have enough thrust weight ratio to get us into orbit alone. This is already 4000, which is enough for orbiting. Uh... Although it's only 2,500 down here, so we have 2,000, which is enough to get us into space. And then, yeah, that's enough for orbiting. That's way more than enough for orbiting. So we just need uh, radio decouplers. Ah, oh, let's use the big ones. Are they way more expensive? I mean, they're heavier. They're not that way more expensive, okay. We'll be using two of them at the middle of this. And we'll use just boosters, thumpers, kickbacks. Kickbacks seem like a good idea. Use our two kickbacks, which will give us... Hmm. Wrong. You all go up here. You go into one stage. The stage whose data V just vanished, basically. What? It does have more data. V. It does have more data V. Why does it have more data V? This is weird. Together they have a data V of 2400. If I put them into one stage, that if they have a data V of. less okay but this should be enough no thinking about this stuff it's okay we'll use this we'll place it closer to the ground so that we get the proper rocket feeling a rocket has to start directly over the ground so that the uh liftoff can make an actual sense uh, so we need aerodynamics we need the nose cones which are these for this rocket no this one gets the tiny ones, yeah? Stupid tiny ones. Okay. Uh, and all of this has to move down because we were too close to the fairing. That's why it's feeling weird. I had to get the, tr the, the angle snap. Yeah, yeah, of course. This is still above the ground. That's okay. You will also go with them. We have a total of 3,200 Delta V into space and can then move around with the Poodle, which is way overdone. So I'm actually doing it with a smaller tank, as I originally wanted to do, or was thinking about at least. So this moves with this and then this gets deployed and this is some more time before that. Okay. 
Yeah, we just uh, upped our Delta V again. Not in the upper stage, with, which only has 900 Delta V. That's way more than enough for interception. And we just want to do interception with this. So up there, we have the thing that has uh, has to, to get the experiments. The question is, can we even click that when we're... Oh, God. Can we click that if we're standing on the thing? No idea. This is the KSS rescuer. Because MK1, of course. Because it has to rescue the KSS from game breaking bugs. Uh, auto strutting. These to the heaviest part. This to the root part. And the other fuel tank also to the root part and everything that's up here should definitely be auto strutted to its grandparent part. Just to have more with via the auto strutting more uh, more stuff going on here. Okay. I hope that I can click at this. This might be an actual problem. So, which pilot do we take up there? Because he has to stay up there. We don't have a pilot to take up there. So, most important thing now. Use this to get another pilot. This astronaut complex. We need a pilot. No courage, no stupidity. No, I want one that is stupid. Because... This is the pilot who volunteered to stay on the station forever and not move around. I think it must be this one. Not courageous enough to uh, to go to a proper mission. Okay, and so we're gonna start. Wait, I forgot one part that we have to take uh, have to do. For this to work. I have an idea. If we take the communitron off and the experiment storage container off and put the experiment storage container somewhere where we can see and click like here. Or oh, how does this move the center of mass? Not. Not at all. Yeah. Aerodynamic overlay. Okay. What's this you? Um, my friend the aerodynamic overlay is bugging again. Yeah, it can't make aerodynamic stuff for stuff that has no fins. Because that's the most important thing that we forgot about. Of course, we need uh, winglets here. Four of them. And of course, we need them in the way where they make sense, like over here. Because, I mean, that does a lot of drag, but my center ma of mass is fairly down. So you can tackle this problem actually in two parts. I always showed like the add drag to the end part uh, portion of it, but you can actually also uh, also just place heavier part at the front so that your center of mass is somewhere around here. Then also no turning around will happen. But as our center of mass is here with the tanks, of course, uh, we'll have to use winglets here, and I think we'll have to use bigger wings. When did I buy these wings? It's weird. I don't remember when I bought these wings, but okay. Let's use the swept wings, because they look ridiculous on a rocket. They look really ridiculous on the rocket, but their drag is far superior to the drag of the other ones. Now we have 
Uh, everything is strutted, everything is done. Uh, we have this to send our, our information to you and we want more. Turn off. Turn you off, please. Ah, okay, that works. So we're placing one experimental storage unit down here because we will st uh, let this stand on the launch pad we will drive around with our science rover that i'll build now and drive around now and park there and then we'll take the pilot of the science rover to go out of the science rover grab this uh, the stuff out of its experimental storage unit and bring it over to this which will then let me click on this to uh, to get the uh, data out of this so we can leave this box behind and make it be here then we'll go into space at which point our friend who volunteered his name was Sidon Sidon can go out, make an EVA, grab the data from the experiment storage unit and place it into the uh, place it into the cupola, do our maneuver to get to the KSS, and then um, and then get rid of the whole lower part so that doesn't need to care about this anymore. And then he'll do the stuff with a KSS and he'll have all the data available in his copula module to be transferred to the science lab. So that's what we're doing here. I'm cheesing science again. Of course I'm cheesing science. Okay. So uh, I'm going to drive around with a rover to get science data to, to that place. See you in the next episode when we save the Kerbal Space Station.